It was just all really wild and freaky, this big fat guy with this big voice. My immediate impression was, who the hell would ever touch this? If someone had told me that it was going to be this big successful record, I probably would have said, you're crazy. There's no way. The rest of the band had played with him before, so they, they knew what to expect, but I hadn't. And he's, he was laying uh, behind stage, like gasping for air. And everybody, in the, the, everybody else in the band kind of just stepped over him and went to the dressing room. Oh, meet, good show, meet. Yeah, see you later. And I'm like, well, wait a second. Should we get an ambulance? What, what, is there a paramedic around? <laughs> this guy needs help. He's like, nah, he does it every night. Don't worry about it. Well, there were notes that he couldn't hit or couldn't hit with the same strength or tone any longer. And this was like freaking meatloaf out completely. You know, he thought this is more serious than just, you know, not being able to hit the notes during the take in the studio. He thought he was, you know, suffering some lifelong damage here. Jim was not going to let the album die. He was going to make it a Jim Steinman album before he'd let it die. And I imagine Meatloaf must have taken some umbrage to that, you know, like, Jim, why don't you, you know, readjust and accommodate to me rather than, you know, being such a fascist about the whole thing. Never in a million years. If someone had told me that it was going to be this big, successful record, I probably would have said, you're crazy. There's no way. No, no possible way. It's just, the t it's been too long, the t you know, the timing's not right. Um, who cares about that kind of music anymore? The kids, you know, it's like, it's about rap, hip-hop, and, uh, and dance music, and techno, and acid, and house, and, and everything else that is not what meat is.